All right, welcome back to the channel. So my last video about psilocybin mushrooms was quite popular, so I wanted to make another one, obviously from a mycological research perspective and a harm reduction perspe uh, perspective. I don't encourage anyone to eat these mushrooms, obviously. Uh, this is purely for science. Uh, I just wanted to go into some of the identification features um, in a little bit more detail with you guys, because the last video was like very broad, very general. That was sort of a zero to hero guide. Um, this one we're going to get a little bit more nerdy. We're going to talk about like, exactly the kind of things that you're looking for because some people are still still appear to be struggling with the lookalikes. So the first thing I want to show you is the separable gelatinous pellicle. This can actually be quite hard to get on camera, so I'm hoping this fresh uh, specimen is going to show us it. There you go. You might have just seen it then. There you go. That that jelly membrane layer that is clearly coming off the top of the cap there is a key identification feature. It's called the separable gelatinous pellicle. The lookalikes do not have this. Protostrophari is a kind of slimy, but you will not be able to you will not be able to separate this layer from the top of the cap. So, in keeping with talking about the cap for the minute, this guy has a really really prominent nipple on the top. Uh, the technical name is a papilla. The cap itself is extremely bell shaped. The cap's technical name is the peleus. So we have a papilla on top of the peleus here. Also along the bottom of the cap, you can see there's a brown, a brown sort of purpley skirt there. That is a result of the spores dropping and maturing with age. You can actually sort of see striations through the cap as well. Um, that's just the that's just the gills themselves where they're so dark. You can see the colour going through the cap there. Right. So next up, we're going to check out the uh, gills on these bad boys. Yeah. Hopefully that worked out really well. So these guys are either adnate or adnext. Adnate um, basically just means to widely uh, grow towards the stem and add next is to narrowly grow towards the stem. They start off a cream color and then they, they turn purple with age going right through to um, almost like a black sort of color once they are quite old and they've dropped loads of spores. And the, the stipe on these guys is uh, pretty nondescript in all honesty. It's flexible, so it's not brittle. Usually you can like, you know, especially when they're fresh like this, you can wrap around your finger and they're not gonna snap, uh, snap completely. And they'll split apart, quite fibrous. When they're young like this and fresh, um, as you can see, it's sort of a darker, darker cream color, and they they always tend to be much darker towards the base. Sometimes, like that one there, you can get a bit of bluing in the stem. There's a few here as well that we're just going to take a look at. So they're not always straight. You know, you can, they can be wobbly like this, and the the uh, the stipe is generally quite bright at the top. All right, this is uh, interesting. I didn't expect to see one of these out here. They're not insanely rare, but um, you know. You can you can see hundreds and hundreds of these mushrooms, and you will and you know never find a sterile one. So this guy has a mutation that means it's not producing any spores. That's why it's got this uh, strange sort of ghostly yellow color to it. So you can see you know, next to these other ones here, it's drastically different. But it's got all the all the identification features I mentioned earlier, and the uh, stipe there is even going bright blue, which is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, in the sun a bit. I hope you guys don't mind me absolutely nerding out, by the way, um, but I'm pretty sure this is interesting stuff still. Uh, these mushrooms are also hygrophonous. <laughs> um, basically, that means that the color changes depending on how moist it is. So you can see this one here is like the freshest and the wettest. It's the darkest. And then going right up to this guy, they're all the same species of mushroom, all the same identification features. Um, but yeah, they are quite, uh, they can be drastically different in their color. Just wanted to uh, show you these two absolute beautiful specimens as well while we're at it. Gorgeous. So um, typical as well. Other than that, I recommend uh, getting a mesh bag, you know, the type that you uh, put your vegetables in at the supermarket when you collect the mushrooms, because as you're going around, you're going to be able to, uh, these guys are going to be able to drop their spores for hours to come. Right, so that's going to be it for this one. I would love to find uh, some albinos or some leucistic ones and show you those maybe one day. Um, I have found a leucistic one before. I think it was leucistic anyway. It had spores, but it was like ghostly white. The spores were uh, brown still, I mean, so I don't think it was an albino. But anyway, yeah, quick one. Um, just wanted to go a little bit more into the science. Obviously, I did some more research before I came out today. Pretty sure I got everything right. Obviously, I'll cut anything out that I, that I didn't get right. But uh, yeah, take care, guys.